Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. And as you guys know, the crypto space is a very interesting place. And there's a couple things going on that I really wanted to bring to you guys' attention. It has to do with Terra Luna, has to do with Dogecoin and Elon Musk, and it has to do with XRP. Together with that, we have some Polygon news and potentially some other minor stuff. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure you press that like button. It is greatly appreciated and let us move on. So straight at the bat here, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, had something very interesting to say. For those of you keeping count, 12 amnesty briefs submitted. This basically means in their lawsuit, about 12 other parties have basically come to Ripple's aid to join them. It's unprecedented, I'm told, to have this happen at this stage. They each explain in their own unique way the irreparable harm the SEC will do to every facet of the US crypto economy if it gets its way. And that is after the general counsel at Ripple, Stuart Alderoti, actually said a dozen independent voices, companies, developers, exchanges, public interest and trade associations, retail holders, all filing in the SEC versus Ripple case to explain how dangerously wrong the SEC is. The SEC's response, we need more time not to listen or engage, but to blindly bulldoze on. And that's because their most recent letter from yesterday was basically the SEC saying that, you know, they're not going into any sort of debate or anything like that. No, they just need a little bit of extra time and a couple of extra uh, pages to file to respond to all these different new sides, I guess. That's the best way to describe it. Different sides from different companies who are also standing in solidarity by Ripple side slash as XRP holders, you know, on the sidelines to explain why the SEC is basically wrong. So regarding that, it's just interesting to acknowledge, I guess, right? The fact that this is so absolutely wild. The SEC has had zero friends, zero companies joining them. And again, it's unprecedented apparently that so ridiculously many companies join at the last moment and it doesn't make sense because, well, it doesn't really make sense for so many of them to join this late. And fun fact, it's finally now that Cointelegraph and places like that are also starting to report on this stuff too, as usually they do not do that. All right, now before we move on, I want to quickly note from you guys and put this in the comments section. Do you believe that November is going to be a bullish month? Again, October has now had eight out of 10 months being bullish. I wonder if November is going to put it seven out of 10 as well, or if this time around is actually going to end bearish. Right now, the entire crypto market is doing rather well. You know, Bitcoin is actually trading above $21,000. If I refresh it, you can see it right here. XRP is up 8% today, trading at roughly 50 cents. And well, things are generally speaking doing quite good. One of the coins that's doing absolutely massive is Polygon, standing at $1.16 right now. And there was an interesting article. Polygon whales anticipated big announcements and here's the proof. Now, honestly, I don't care too much about that specific proof that they're talking about. I care mostly about the fact that I made a video very, very recently, I think about a week and a half or maybe two weeks ago or so, explaining to you guys why Polygon is in such a extremely good position right now and why I recommend everybody to look into it. Again, guys, I'm not your financial advisor. I cannot say buy it right now because you should. I can only say look into it with a strong suggestion for you to do some actual research. And that's because Polygon was showing a lot of signs of being undervalued from the perspective that they have some of the craziest partnerships in crypto. And that's something which they didn't have before. There are coins like VeChain, HBAR, potentially Algorand that have had partnerships that are just crazy, but they've had them in the big bull run. With Polygon, they've been doing well, sure, but they had themselves the, um, the upgrade for Ethereum that basically moved on to Polygon as well you know, literally, because it's a layer two for uh, Ethereum. Ever since then, things started to kind of roll into the better, but there's been no bull market. And so a lot of these announcements that have came out, have come out, were all when the price of Bitcoin, really, the price of all coins wasn't doing that well. So I was thinking, philosophizing as well, well, or theorizing, if right now, the majority of the crypto market holders are you know, risk averse, they don't want to invest in many things, but there are crazy partnerships happening for this specific crypto right now as we speak, and the price is not really pumping too much, it should be bought then because people are just too scared to go for something. But you should keep it in mind that you should actually go ahead and buy it. It doesn't really matter. I just decided to fill my bags worth with Polygon, and it turned out to be a very smart decision. But just check back on my channel from about a week or two ago. It was a really informative video, I think. Yeah, to kind of continue, things are doing really, really well. They're trying to state the sharp drop in supply on exchanges around 11th of October, Suggest so large accumulation during that period as 
taking money off of exchanges means less selling pressure or basically more accumulation to some degree. And people sometimes say that's very nice. All we know is JP Morgan, uh, Facebook, Starbucks, Reddit, they're all partnering and all building on top of Polygon. They're doing amazing for themselves. Little shot at Dogecoin, which is not a negative shot actually. Here's why Twitter could prove to be the ultimate Elon Musk backed catalyst for $1 Doge dream price. And actually in our article, Bill Gates once issued a warning to the world about how rich Elon Musk could become. These two go hand in hand. I honestly think, and you gotta think with me here, if Elon is smart about it, he can make billions upon billions upon billions of dollars just with Doge. And honestly, um, here's Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, stating, Now that Twitter's in the hands of Elon, I can see a real possibility that Doge will somehow merge with the platform, said Hoskinson. There's almost no negative side for him doing so, and a very big plus if he plays his cards right, which is why I am pretty bullish on Dogecoin. But to that degree, I'm also thinking there's a very good chance he's going to say something about it, and there's a very good chance that he might just buy a ton before making these announcements, if the SEC can clear him for that. Uh, but I think if he plays his cards right, he can make a ton of money on that alone. Let's quickly move on with some rapid pace news. I didn't cover this before, even though it's not the newest of the newest news. Fidelity to offer Bitcoin and Ethereum trading to retail investors. Fidelity's 34 million investors will be able to buy Bitcoin and Ethereum without commission. And it's happening already as we speak. They're a $4.5 trillion asset management. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Apparently, Do Kwon reportedly instructed an employee to manipulate the Terra's market price, which is interesting. I don't know the actual details of it. All I know is that it was earlier alleged that he was going to Singapore. Oh, no, that he went from Korea to Singapore. Singapore, from Singapore to Dubai. I looked from here, I didn't find him. Uh, actually, I think BitLord found him, right? Which is interesting. Uh, but then now apparently Terrace Do Kwan is in Europe after fleeing Singapore. I can't necessarily call it fleeing from Dubai, that is, because apparently he did flee from Singapore and South Korea for tax evasion and fraud, which is going to be very interesting. It still has to showcase whether or not he did things wrong or not, or if he's just, you know, a dumbass, basically. Again, not saying he's a dumbass, it has to be pointed out whether or not he made some honest mistakes let's put it like that, or if you have malicious intent to scam people, right? And right now that discussion is going on because apparently some Korean authorities have found proof that he tried to manipulate the Luna price and that would not be too good. Then again, it also depends, you know, I think every project founder to some degree has manipulated the price and wants to keep the price at some sort of stable level, if not higher. So it does make a little bit of sense, but it just depends on exactly how they've done it and whether or not they cause some major crashes or major pump and dumps or so, but that obviously was not explained in the article. Now, again, guys, I don't want to keep saying this, but make sure you go ahead and check out BitGet. It's a crypto exchange with the link down below. The reason I'm telling you guys to go ahead and check it out is because by just signing up, you get $10. Boom. By depositing something, $50 or more, you get $20 in XRP that you could do with as you please. And if you deposit more, there are actually bonuses upwards of $8,000. Again, just check the link down below for BitGet and you'll figure everything out, I assume. Because this is just absolutely wild, you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of bonuses. If you're smart with that, you can turn that into cold hard cash. Uh, but just make sure you check it out. A link will be down below. At least grab yourself your $10 gift. And that was mostly it for today's video. Covered some quick news. Just wanted to get that out to you guys. A little bit regarding Ripple, XRP, a little bit regarding Dogecoin, a little bit regarding Terra. And um, Polygon, that was it for right now. Make sure you press the like button if you enjoyed it. See you guys later.